Guyana gained independence on the 26th of May 1966. However, the road to independence and post-independence was no easy journey. 56 years later, Guyana is now heading into an oil and gas economy with a thriving agriculture, mining, infrastructure, housing, education, and business sector, among others. Who could have imagined we would be where we are today? Join us as we take a look at independence then and now, 56 years later. Significant inroads into Guyana's journey to independence started in the early 1950s. Then, the People's Progressive Party, PPP, founded in 1950 under the leadership of Dr. Chedi Jagan and Forbes Burnham, enjoyed overwhelming support from the working class as they pursued national unity and self-governance. Well, the PPP was at the center of the independence struggle. In fact, the PPP was born at the party to fight for independence. Its very first document in 1950 spoke about fighting for it. Or even before that, if you go back there, in 1946, Dr. Jagan, his wife Janet, Ashton Chase, and H.J.M. Hubbard, Jocelyn Hubbard, they formed an organization called the Political Affairs Committee. And they started to produce a magazine, a bulletin, uh, the PAC bulletin, which they started to distribute first to some influential people, but not, not too well known people. And then in my, this bulletin grew at a rapid rate and other people joined at a very early stage um, the struggle. The, P, the, the PAC was the forerunner of the PPP and they said they set as their goal, one of the, the goals they set was to create a political party to fight for independence and social progress. So by 1950, when it, the, the PAC had finished its job, and the PPP was formed, and in the, the very first documents of the PPP, their aims and objectives, the number one aim was to fight for independence of the country. And that remained with the PPP throughout, um, to fight for freedom, independence, and we, they made a very early period, I would say, the, from 1950 to 1953, they made a lot of great progress in a, in a very quick way. Looking back to where it all began, in 1831, the former Dutch colony of Essequibo, Demerara and Burbies were united to become British Guiana. And in 1928, British Guiana became a crowned colony. In 1951, British Guiana was granted a new constitution, the Waddington Constitution, with a 24-seat legislative assembly elected by universal adult suffrage and a Senate. In 1950, the, the PPP contested its first elections. At, it was the Georgetown Tong Kong elections. The PPP had put up three candidates, Cherry Jagan, Forbes Bonham, and Janet Jagan. Shelly Jagan and Forbes Barnum lost. Chandra Jagan won the Wartmanville Working Ross area. And she became the first woman ever to be elected to any office in, in, in Guyana at the town council. And in the town council area, she did a fantastic job in trying to push for progress for ordinary people. And there also, she raised her voice to have universal adult suffrage. Election by universal adult suffrage, in which every single person over 21 had a right to vote. Um, um, in 1953, you, you know up to now we have um, symbols. Political parties have symbols. The PPP has the cup, the PNC has the palm tree. Um, prior to the palm tree in 57, they had the broom. Um, and that was for the period in 53 when uh, there were a lot of illiterate people about. So they couldn't read and they couldn't understand People's Progressive Party or People's National Congress, but they Look could the understand the cup the symbol. So um, that was how that came about. May 1953, the PPP won the general election under the new constitution and Dr. Chedi Jagan is elected chief minister. However, the British suspended the British Guiana Constitution in October 1953 and removed the PPP from government and installed an interim government from 1953 to 1957. We were shocked 
at and still are at a loss to understand the action of the British government in sending military and naval forces to British Guiana, in suspending the constitution and dismissing the dem democratically elected ministers of the government. I think it was, but that carried out a big euphoria. And it was also the elections in which the PPP was caught in a pincer attack from the opposition parties. For instance, the, the, the League of Colored People, which was an Afro-Guyanese uh, um, organization based purely on race, but began to attack the PPP and attack Bonham to say that he was in this PPP and being used by Indian Skuli people. And Cherry, on the other hand, was being attacked by the, the Indian organization. And one man by the name of Debadin uh, came out with the, with the slogan of Apanjat against the PPP. Because why, I, why I'm making that point? Because subsequently, people threw that in the mouths of the PPP. They tried to turn it around, but it really came as an attack on the PPP. And then they were saying that Jagan was selling out the Indian people to the black people and talking about federation and, and then that's when Debedin came out, vote for your own, Apanjat, in, in, in that 1953 elections. But what was important to note that, that the PPP was able to overcome all of that and united the people. Never before our country was so united, before nor after. The, our country was ever so united at, at that period of time. Following the 1955 leadership struggle, the PPP fractured into two rival wings under the political powerhouse of Dr. Cherry Jagan and Lyndon Forbes Samson Burnham. British Guiana then received a revised constitution in 1956 that provided limited self-government primarily through a 24-member legislative council in which 15 are elected, 6 nominated, and 3 ex officio members. In 1957, Dr. Chagan, who remained with the PPP, won a new general election with nine of the 14 elected seats. The Burnham-led People's National Congress grabbed the remaining three seats. After the interim government was installed, this was a government of sheer, um, of sheer non-elected persons. It included some of the people who had fought the 1953 elections and had lost badly, like like Lionel Locku, for example, was a member of the interim government. Um, Anthony Tasca, who was the head of Bokors at the time, he was in the interim government. Um, you had he was Nathaniel Critchlow, who was a very who was very progressive at the beginning of the, his era when he fought for the establishment of the British Guiana Labour Union and was very much pro. Um, worker and so on. He had become conservative as the years went by, more conservative, and he served in the interim government. W.R. Kendall, Rudy Kendall, who was um, a member of the United Democratic Party. Uh, these were all conservative people. So they all um, served in the interim government and did basically nothing. But the interim period was a period to allow the British government to destroy or divide the PPP. So they had two methods. One was the jailed leaders who they believe were loyal to Jagan. Um, Martin Carter, Koyana was restricted, several other leaders. My father was imprisoned and restricted to this area. Uh, so, so some people were jailed, some were restricted. And they used the period also to encourage what they call the moderates, Burnham, Jainarine Singh, Lach, um, JB Singh, Jang Bahadur Singh, and others to leave the PPP. So both things happened. Those were the political issues in the 1957 to um, 1953 to 57 period, but no development took place, and they understood that the British government understood that people were becoming restless. They wanted to move forward. The momentum that was created in 1953 didn't end. They couldn't suppress it, so they eventually called elections in 1957. 
1958, Dr. Jagan introduced a resolution into the Legislative Council calling on the British government to grant self-governance to Guyana. Passing the resolution unanimously, the British Council established a constitutional committee to consider the proposal. 1959, the Constitutional Committee holds 19 meetings before presenting its report with the key recommendation that Guyana becomes an independent state within the Commonwealth of Nations. What was significant, it was a new era in politics after 53. There were two separate eras. There was the pre-1953 era when with the limited franchise and political parties had no interest in the condition of the ordinary Guyanese person. And after 53, um, popular politics then took over. The, the um, interests of the, of the electorate and of the working people be, became paramount thereafter. 1960, a constitutional conference held in London provided for a new constitution with full internal self-government through an elected 35-member legislative assembly. This conference agreed that British Guiana could become independent by 1963, two years after a 1961 election. From 1962 to 1963, Constitutional Conference are held in London to settle the terms for independence. But the leaders of the three political parties, the PPP, the PNC, and the United Force, UFC, were unable to reach a consensus on the terms of a new constitution. October of 1963, escalating ethnic violence in Guyana eventually resulted in the three parties agreeing to have the British settle the matter of the reformed constitution for independence. The British settled the matter on a form of proportional representation, or PR, which was aimed at providing the domination by any single ethnic group in a 53-member legislature. 1964, elections are held under the PR system and brings to power a coalition of the PNC led by Forbes Burnham and the United Force. The PPP won 46% of the votes and 24 seats, which made it the majority party. One of the reasons that our race relations is not worse than it is was largely because the PPP never succumbed to fighting and trying to organize purely on race. While the PPP recognized that the bulk of the votes came from Indian Guyanese, they never accepted, Dr. Jagan never accepted the PPP as being an Indian party. And its program was always a um, multi-ethnic working class. It, it, it was, it was, the PPP was based on class, not on race, um, and directly on the workers and farmers, are the representative of the workers and farmers. And PPP saw, in fact, even in the worst times of the riots in 63, 64, 62, you will see every leader of the PPP, every statement of the PPP, every speech by a leader of the PPP was calling for unity, while the other opposition forces and the newspaper, the media was horrible at the time in openly pushing racism in the country to try to destroy the country and hopefully to destroy the party. I don't know if they felt that this thing would be easily patch up if they win the election, that they could easily patch it up. But I, I don't know if they, they realized then that they were creating um, for, the, for us, the future gener our, our generation and probably the generation even after us, that they were creating a major, major problem for, for us to bring back the, that unity that was experienced in the, in the 1950s. However, the PNC, with 40% of the votes and 22 seats, and the TUF, with 11% of the votes and 7 seats, enjoyed the overall majority and were invited to form the new government. Dr. Jagan called the election fraudulent and refused to resign as Prime Minister. But the constitution was amended to allow the governor to remove Dr. Jagan from office. Burnham became Prime Minister on December 14, 1964. Burnham would remain as the country's Prime Minister as Guyana gained independence with Dr. Jagan serving as opposition leader. 
May 26, 1966, Guyana became an independent nation at the stroke of midnight. Thousands of Guyanese of all walks of life in attendance at the Queen Elizabeth Park, later known as the National Park, stood proudly and cheered joyfully as the Union Jack, a symbol of the British colonial rule, for 163 years was lowered and the majestic golden arrowhead was hoisted. The next day was the state opening of the Parliament of Guyana. Significantly for this occasion, the Duke of Kent presented Prime Minister Burnham with the constitutional instrument designating Guyana as an independent nation. Guyana becoming an independent nation now meant that Britain no longer controlled the affairs of the country. It was now the responsibility of the newly elected Prime Minister and his locally elected cabinet. Independence also meant new symbols and emblems for the country. The name for the independent nation Guyana had been chosen since 1962 by a selected committee appointed by the House of Assembly. The general design and colors of the new national flag were chosen during the period of the PPP's government 1961 to 1964 from entries submitted through an international competition. The winning five-color design was submitted by an American, Whitney Smith. It was finalized with slight adjustment by the successor PNC UF coalition government after the 1965 Independence Conference. A special committee appointed by the government designed the new coat of arms and selected the kanji peasant as the national bird, the golden jaguar as the national animal, and the Victoria Regia lily as the national flower. The Amerindian headdress, the shield, among others, formed part of the national symbol. The designers were Alvin Bowman, Stanley Greaves, and L.R. Burroughs. A nationwide competition sponsored by the then National History and Art Council also helped select the words for the new national anthem. The winning entry, Greenland of Guyana, was written by Reverend Archibald Luker, and the words were set to music by Cyril G. Potter, a prominent Guyanese educator and musician. As we reflect, let's take a listen. Of Guyana, 
As an independent nation, Guyana would go on to create its own constitution, motto, judiciary, national institutions, and other symbols that provide a sense of national pride and identity. Guyana was on the threshold of a new era. The country had attained political independence, but the work was not yet complete. The next 56 years would realize several successes and failures as the country worked towards economic independence. From 1966 to 1970, the head of state under the constitution of 1966 was the Queen of Guyana, Elizabeth II who was also the Queen of the United Kingdom and the other Commonwealth realms. The monarch was represented in Guyana by a Governor General. Guyana became a republic within the Commonwealth under the Constitution of 1970. And the monarch and Governor General were replaced by a ceremonial president, Arthur Chung. Arthur Chung was elected on the 17th of March 1970 to the 12th of March 1976 and continued to hold office until the 6th of October 1980, a total of 10 years, with LFS Burnham serving as Prime Minister. Following the 1980 election, the People's National Congress Burnham served as the first executive president, a total of four years, 304 days with Ptolemy Alexander Reed and Hugh Desmond Hoyt serving as Prime Minister. After the passing of Burnham, Desmond Hoyt of the People's National Congress served as the second executive president being elected on the 12th of December 1985 to the 9th of October 1992, a total of seven years, 64 days, with Hamilton Bilal Green serving as the Prime Minister. On the 9th of October 1992, Desmond Hoyt lost the election to Dr. Chedi Jagan of the People's Progressive Party, who served as the third executive president for four years, 148 days, until his passing on the 6th of March 1997, with Samuel Hines serving as Prime Minister. As a result of the death of Dr. Chedi Jagan, Samuel Hines of the People's Progressive Party Civic was then sworn in and served as the fourth executive president for nine months, with Janet Jagan serving as Prime Minister. On December 19, 1997, wife of deceased president and a leader of the People's Progressive Party, Janet Jagan, served as the fifth executive president for one year, 235 days, until her resignation on the 11th of August, 1999, with Samuel Hines and Bharat Jagdeo serving as Prime Minister. After President Janet Jagan announced her resignation as President due to health reasons, Bharat Jagdeo was sworn in as the President on the 11th of August. At age 35, he was one of the youngest heads of state in the world. On the 31st of March 2001, Bharat Jagdeo was elected as the 6th Executive President and was re-elected on the 28th of August 2006 to the 3rd of December 2011 for a second term and accumulated 12 years, 114 days, with Samuel Hines serving as his Prime Minister throughout his tenure. Donald Ramatar, also of the People's Progressive Party, succeeded Bharat Jagdeo on the 3rd of December 2011 to the 16th of May 2015 as the 7th Executive President for 3 years, 164 days. Samuel Hines also served as Prime Minister. On the 16th of May 2015, David Arthur Granger of the People's National Congress was elected to serve as the 8th Executive President for 5 years, 78 days, until the 2nd of August 2020, with Moses Farsami Nagamutu serving as Prime Minister. The journey continued on the 2nd of August with the swearing-in of Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali 
of the People's Progressive Party Civic as the ninth executive president with Mark Anthony Phillips serving as prime minister. With optimistic but realistic vision, the Dr. Ali-led PPPC's government has begun working to build a new multidimensional economy. This new Guyana will be a land of opportunity for all, providing jobs, healthcare, education, housing, first world infrastructure, a conducive business climate, and stable and reliable utilities. Here we are now. The University of Guyana, established in 1963, has undergone several upgrades over the years. New institutions such as the Ombudsman Office and the Court of Appeal were established. Numerous schools built, a network of roads and bridges on the coastland and the hinterland. A floating bridge was erected across the Demerara River. Several ferries accommodating travels, new and upgraded airports, new stelling constructed, affordable home built, several new housing areas developed, support infrastructure for farmers implemented across the country. The sugar industry was modernized and restructured, just to name a few. Guyana is on a road to prosperity. Look where we came from.